Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of JWF Defiance. I'm your temporary host, Silver Spoon, joined by a man who has had one hell of a week in the form of Captain Tibbs. Tibbs, how you doing? Oh, still uh, been better, I, I suppose. That's a hard question to ask right now. That is right, but I'll bet you are feeling a lot better right now seeing these men walk to the ring. The hottest young act in the world of the JWF right now, the tag team known as Big Fisted, and they are in for a match of their dreams tonight. I hope so, Sills. I mean, uh, Big Fist and they have, uh, they have really grown in the hearts of, of the JWF faithful, but uh, are they anywhere near this team? That is right. A team that I, has not wrestled a match in years together at this point, Tibbs. And, you know, they uh, they made their challenge to Demon Inc. for Wrestlepalooza. Said, hey, we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. But they are willing to test themselves. And that's what I appreciate, appreciate about these men in the BS. You see Scotty Moore, Blake Tanner willing to test themselves. I mean, at the end of the day, if Big Fiston happens to get a victory tonight, that could put their Wrestlepalooza tag title opportunity in jeopardy. But it doesn't matter. They are coming out and they are willing to fight. And then they're willing to do commentary after. Well, you know, that's that's just... Speak spades towards the whole BS. I mean, these two teams, <laughs> they, they are definitely designed to tear the house down. And half of that match right there is going to be commentating for the rest of the show. That is right. Our usual defined commentary team of Blake Tanner and Scotty. Mar we really should not have let a commentary team become a tag team as well Tibbs I mean at that point you're just you're asking for a empty commentary booth every week well at least they know they have someone reliable they can kind of just pop up whenever they need them that's that us that is that is right Tibbs oh look at that the the Russian effect from the man known as Vlad Tankman and you can tell these uh these two boys big fisted they are not awestruck tonight they are not starstruck by this opportunity they are willing to take the bs to their limit and i appreciate that i mean you would really have to sills i'd be honestly disappointed if i got into the r ring with a uh, someone that i thought of as a hero or that if someone who thought of me as a hero got into the ring with me if i wasn't getting their best and i wasn't giving them my best I, you just not feel good about the situation that is right. Wait a minute. Could we see it? The gentleman's. Oh, no. Vlad Tankman attempting that gentleman's clutch, but instead comes face to face with an SMG. Goes to the pen. One, two. Ooh, last minute kick out from Tankman, but you can see almost a look of uh, look of pride there on the face of Scotty Moore. I mean, you got to think about this, Tibbs. The BS, they trained Big Fisted. They brought these kids up, brought them into the world of pro wrestling, as it were, and now they're wrestling them in their return match. Uh-huh, we're getting to see this match pitting the BS against Big Fist and the BF. That is right, and let's not forget the uh, BS and... Big Fisted aren't any strangers to one another as, oh, mm. Scotty Moore went for a Big Fist drop off the top, but Tankman avoids it, but eats, oh, those big kicks straight to the hamstring. Scotty Moore going crazy right now. Uh-huh, oh, so you talked like about how uh, how uh, the BS taught Big Fist, and they probably weren't going too easy on him, so uh, this might be closer to what they went through in class. That's right, ooh. Not even a two count there, uh, holding down the man known as Tekken Mike. But like I was saying, the BS, no strangers to one another. Uh, the man known as Tekken Mike and Blake Tanner just a few short weeks ago battled for the JWF Defiant Championship. And I'll be honest, those men took each other to their limits in that matchup. And now... With their tag partners by their side, I, I can't wait to see how it goes. Oh, absolutely, Sills. Tech and Mike has, um, has proven himself to be a, a, ooh, a nice up-and-coming star. That is right, but unfortunately, those stars can fall just as quick. One, two, oh, 
Oh, two and three quarters. Tech and Mike kicking out of it. Uh huh. Uh, you can tell Tech and Mike, it, it's not gonna, it's gonna take a lot more than what you might think to put that guy down. He's got everything but a Ooh. glass jaw. That's right. I mean, he might have been playing possum there. You saw he waited for uh, Blake Tanner to get tagged in and immediately took control. I mean, at the end of the day, Tech and Mike certainly has more ex in ring experience against the man known as Blake Tanner. A little bit more insight into the mind of what Blake's like when he's fighting. I think that was a wise move and it pays off with the big fist. One, two, Ooh, not even a two count there. Blake kicking out. Uh -huh, that might also be a little bit of experience from their previous bout. Sells Blake Tanner uh, knowing when to avoid the punches, the big fists Ooh. of Tech and Mike. That's right, so he can land moves like that. The bee sting, that vicious brain buster maneuver, dropping Tech and Mike straight down onto his cranium. But you can see, it looks like it did not phase him because he's calling forth the bigger fist. Goes for the pinfall. Oh, but Blake Tanner immediately there to grab the ropes. That is a rookie mistake on the part of Tech and Mike. Uh huh. Really should have pulled his opponent further away from the ropes that could have gotten him the win but it also could have taken time away from his pin attempt it's it's a hard call to make sales that's right but you can see not wasting any time celebrating but that celebration earned him a big boot from the hero of the jwf who is in like a house of fire but oh gets dropped just as quickly and we've seen big, we've seen bigger, and biggest fist straight to the jaw. Rolls him over, goes for the pin. One, two, ho, oh, oh, ho, kicking out in tips. I swear you could, you could have counted to three, three million at that point. And that just shows the resiliency of a man like Scotty Moore to survive the power of the biggest fist. Exactly, Sills. They don't call it the biggest fist for nothing. That is a powerful heavy hit and move right there. Oh, and now look at that. Using that, the secondary fist, that metallic sheathed fist. And he has laid out the arrow, the JWF, and it looks like Vlad Tankman in to finish the job. Oh, with a big punch to the gut, and then ooh, went for a lariat, but gets hung for his troubles. Uh-huh, it could have... Uh, Tankman was looking to establish a little bit of uh, forward momentum here in this match, coming in fresh, but Scotty Moore is not allowing that to happen. <clears throat> That is right, but Tankman floats over with that beautiful DDT before picking him up. Oh, discombobulating him, and now he's grabbed him. Gentleman's clutch. And it looks like he's not done. Is he going for seconds? No. Oh, what is Vlad Tankman thinking here? Taking Scotty Moore to the to the uh, turnbuckles. Looks like it's time for Tankman to ring some bells. Uh-huh. That, 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 and lo, the bell ring. That is right. But, oh, wait a minute. Rolled out of the way. Scotty, big forearm in the corner. Here you can see just one precise strike like that was able to take Tankman down, but Tankman coming back twice as hard. Uh -huh. Just a quick leap right onto Scotty Moore. Ground and pound. That's a hell of a way to get, get us some offense in. That is right. You see Tankman now celebrating. I, I'll be honest, that is the one problem I'm seeing with these big fisted boys is liking to celebrate, to count their proverbial chickens before they hatch, but... Vlad Tankman looks like he just made Scotty Moore see his own blood, and that never spells good things when you're in a ring with him. Goes for the pin. One, two, three. There we go. That is right, Tibbs. Once again, experience coming into play more than anything else. The, uh, the egos of Big Fist and the excitement, I'd say, of getting this dream match making them celebrate with the crowd, making them lose focus. And I think in the future, when they have more experience, more seasoning on them, I would love to see a, a rematch at this point. And perhaps if Wrestlepalooza goes their way, it might just be for the JWF Tag Team Championships. Yeah, give them some time, let them learn up, and then let's see how they do against their heroes again. 
That is right, but there they are, ladies and gentlemen, your JWF commentary team and the men who are heading to Wrestlepalooza to fight for um, one of the most precious prizes I think they have ever held in their lives and are certainly looking to hold again the JWF Tag Team Championships. But, Tibbs, while I have you here, I mean... Uh, this week has not gone well for you, and, and I just got to say, I wish you well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, us a little, uh, a little fucking winded. We probably shouldn't have immediately come back to the commentary table. Yeah, this is why. Yeah, this is this is why I would always this is why I always fight first. Oh, yeah, it makes it yeah. easier. Yeah, but uh, we still have to talk. This is the thing, and well, actually, if I if I needed somebody to get me excited, it is this man, Papa Bliss, coming down to the ring, fighting for a title that you held precious once, the JWF Defiant Championship. But I'll be honest, Blake, this ain't the same Papa we knew. This is a different Papa. No, this is bad Papa. This is angry Papa. <laughs> this is Mirror Universe Papa who's <laughs> broken through the veil. Oh, oh God, and fuck. It just starts out with a sexy Papa knee and then a kick to the ribs. Whole Papa Bliss, his, uh, I mean, he is. He's not had an easy life, old Papa Bliss. He's suffered a lot of setbacks, and yeah, that does does things to a man. A lot of setbacks, <laughs> a, a lot of betrayals. It's like he's, it's like he wanted to do what Sting did, but he's a bad guy now. It's kind that, of a dick. That's right. Uh, but of course, a couple of weeks ago, Chuck Gibbons, after winning the Defiant Championship, decided to keep your open challenge, your tradition open, called out any comers, and Papa Bliss came out, but he did not come out for a... Well, he came out for a fight. He didn't come out for a wrestling match. He came out for a fight. And he beat the living hell out of Chuck Gibbons, sent him to a local medical facility, and now... Two weeks later, we're able to sit here and actually watch the match. And you see Gibbons is bringing out two weeks of pent-up fury on his on his ass. No. On his proverbial <laughs> ass. You wanted to open up a can of dad? I'm opening up uh, a can of whoop-ass dad. Kid dad ass. I'm open gonna... up cans. Whoop and damn. Uh, Gibbons, he was still a little bit loopy when he made that interview. Oh. Tried to go for a, uh, a suplex but there, but Papa Bliss, Papa Bliss just, just said sandbagged no. him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> holy shit. Papa Bliss just literally sand. Papa <laughs> Bliss is breaking kayfabe in the center of the ring. This man is a kid shamrock. I can't believe it. I can't believe that he'd do something so unprofessional. He used this to be the consummate dad. This is the brawl for all of... <laughs> I, you know, technically the J. Oh God, don't. Oh no, he's directly in the path of it too. Oh, oh what a pop oh, kick! Uh. Falls in one, two. Oh, and Gibbons kicks out. I thought his reign was gonna be over as soon as it started, but Chuck Gibbons fighting like hell for that defiant title. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of the bitterness came out, and I was like, you know, I'd be fine with that. But no, <laughs> no, Gibbons deserves a better, a better end to the title reign, a longer title reign, a successful title reign. And there's anybody? Yeah, but something about this new, fresh, hot Papa coming in off the street, hot Papa, just willing to murder. <laughs> Like, if if Minoru Suzuki is murder grandpa, Papa Bliss is like murder uncle, which I know he's a papa, but still, he, fuck, he almost just won the title, too. Yeah. Holy shit. He's the papa, but he's got big uncle energy. Well, he's got father-in-law energy, maybe? Big, yeah, I don't know. Uh, big Phil energy. Big Phil <laughs> energy. Go, went for it again. 
And I'll be honest, I think Chuck Gibbons didn't just save his title reign. He may have just saved his career. <laughs> Papa Bliss had a fucking rocket strapped to that foot and was sending it straight for the jaw. But instead, <laughs> looks like that rocket exploded in the hands of Chuck Gibbons. Yeah. It makes the big man a tap out. Oh, he could have kicked, kicked that man's jaw off and sent it flying into the audience, but he didn't. That's right, well, look at that Papa Bliss back up to his feet before- Hey, hey what whoa. the fuck? Fuck you! Don't, don't hit our boys. Don't hit our don't boys like that. Don't Tommy, you piece of shit. No, no, no. Get your dumb ass out of here. Now on to our next matchup of the evening. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I forgot to change his entrance. I was like, oh, that'll be his like special pay-per-view <laughs> entrance. No, that's just how he fucking comes out how, every time now. What's the what's the pyro budget on that weekly? You don't want to know, but I really, I wish I had changed it is all I will say. Um, it's also not even fun. He's just standing up and walking yeah. in the ring like a fucking asshole. I mean, it's fun for like 10 seconds, but like, pick it up. Come on. We got places to be. You, you, haven't, you don't deserve the Undertaker entrance yet. Yeah, you can see the exact moment past Scotty said, fuck this, and then just hit skip. But you know who's man's, a man whose entrance side never skip? The JWF Captain's Champion himself. It's Crush Atlas. Yeah, because his entrance is fucking great. Look at that man. Boom. Look at the fucking pecs on. What a, what what a, a piece, piece of cake. <laughs> what a piece of meat. How you doing, big boy? <laughs> Look at the beef. I fucking love Crush Atlas so much, but this is, of course, a match in our J1 Tournament of Champions. And I'll be honest, God, Crush Atlas wasting no time. Just taking Mark plays to his limit. But for the man known as Crush Atlas, he is fighting for more than just points today. He is fighting for survival because if Mark Place gets this victory tonight, Crush Atlas will be mathematically eliminated from the J1. And I'll be honest, that is devastating news to mm. hear. I it's just so that's so weird to hear, honestly. It, it Yeah. Like I would not expect him to be so close to being mathematically eliminated when that's as uh, well. I mean, we are getting down to the limit now. We are getting down to the wire. Only a few standouts really showing up, and and block B. This block. I mean, the man known as Mark plays, and the man who's going to be in the main event himself, the Jebeduk, have seemed to have been those standouts, which is ironic given their recent. Friendship? I don't really know what the deal is with them. Fr frenemy status, maybe? Frenemy, frenemy status? <laughs> I bet that's gotta yeah. be how Mark puts it on like Instagram and shit. <laughs> it's like The Rock and Kevin Hart is yes. their relationship. At least I think that's what he thinks it is. As he just <laughs> drops him with a spine buster, but oh, returns favor with a European uppercut and now out. Atlas has plucked him up and dropped him down. You know, I would I would look forward to fighting either one of these guys right here um, at the at the end of the J1 tournament. So I'm just kind of just enjoying the ride here when it goes to block B. Look, it's not okay. Look, there's still fucking contender like Griffin could catch up like there's still contenders. But oh, Mark plays proven to be a contender still as he drops Atlas with that big, beautiful DDT, but eats a knee for his troubles. But what kind of contender would I be if I didn't go in with the mindset that I've got to win? That's right. Oh, and then pop handle slam drops uh, Atlas down. Come on, Atlas, Says, you, you got this. If you won't take the spear the first time, take it the second time. Whop! <laughs> there it is, straight to the ribs. Oh, uh, it's so entertaining. And he's yep. not done. That's right, because Mark plays. If you're gonna leave tonight, there's only one way: by getting to the chopper. Good night. Oh, falls into the pinfall. One, two, 
Don't do it. Three Damn. quarters. Fucking mark. mark. It's the mark. It's the mark effect. It's back. It's the effect of Mark. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And also, these guys have got a hell of a bit of history. I mean, Crush Atlas was the only man before yours truly that was able to pin Mark plays. I mean, he was the only man to be able to wrestle a title away from him. Oh, yes. Those were the days. And I know, I know for a fact that Crush Atlas trained like a madman to do it. That's right, but it looks like Mark plays bringing back that fury of a madman as well, dropping him down. And I will say bringing the fight. I have been in the ring with Mark. Pl Fuck it. No, you know, look, Bret Hart was good and all, but I, I feel like Mark plays is not. Nah, this I really feel like he's riding a trend right now. I, you know, it's it sounds sounds about right. And, you know, it shows that he wasn't able to do it well enough and Crush got out. He d he was so bad at putting on a sharpshooter. They thought about adding him to double or nothing. Goes for the pinfall. One, <laughs> two, Ooh. kick out. Good night, Not everybody. A single fucking person on that whole roster in a decent sharpshooter. <laughs> oh. All right, now wait a minute. Uh oh. Clothesline City, baby population, Crush Atlas, Mark plays off the ropes, one last drop before oh. picking him back up, and then the Spine Buster, and Crush Atlas has been fighting valiantly, he has taken him to the chopper, but one, two, it just wasn't good enough to stop Mark fucking plays. Mark fucking plays, though. That's his official middle net. It's like Seth freaking Rollins. He's now Mark fucking plays. Mark fucking plays, mate. Well, Atlas, I, I will say what I am excited about is seeing Crush Atlas in his following J1 matchups because like you still fight even if you're mathematically eliminated. But now he doesn't have to worry about, like, winning. So now I just get to see Crush Atlas really go ham on beating the <laughs> fuck out of somebody. Uh, which is fine. You know what? It'll be like a vacation. Yeah, it'll be like a, a fun little vacation. Oh, but what's not gonna be fun is this next matchup between two competitors who... I will be honest, I've been waiting to see get their due. And this woman has gotten her due all the way to Wrestlepalooza because she is your JWF Women's Champion herself, Phoenix Driver, who has been just kicking ass in the division lately. Yes, let's do it, Phoenix Driver. She looks so good with that belt. I am, much like with Gemini, I'm terrified to try to change anything about her attire, appearance. Like, I'm, I'm afraid to touch it because I'm like, I won't be able to fix it. I won't be able to fix what I fuck up. She's great. It took us so long to just to 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 just make a perfect Phoenix driver the first time. And we just had to set it down and be like, no more, no more. Now, that now, ladies and gentlemen, that is not a pillar. Well, I mean, it is a pillar that you're looking at, but the, 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 the person <laughs> competing <laughs> tonight is I not. Forgot that her entrance comes through the crowd, but if there's not a yeah. ramp. <laughs> so, okay, there she is. She's walking on the skulls of the people in the crowd. It, she's like fucking Sandman. She's like Sandman right now in Hammerstein. Exit <laughs> Uh Jackie Law, a woman who has been waiting to get her due. A woman who has been disrespected, held down in my opinion. I mean, let's be honest, in JXT, she had earned every opportunity and never really got a good shot at the fucking... <laughs> oh, fuck. Why? Why Tiffany now? Why Tiffany now, though? I mean, well, as much as she absolutely sucks, one half of the influencers herself, the woman known as Tiffany, she is fighting 
Phoenix Driver at Wrestlepalooza for the championship. So, in a way, this is a a bit of a wise move. Come down to the ring, get a look at a uh, look at what your opponent's going to be doing. But the thing about a woman like Phoenix Driver is that she changes the method that she uses in every match that she's in against a competitor like Jackie Law. I don't think she's going to be using the same techniques as she is against Tiffany. So. I think Tiffany may be out here more for mind games than anything else, but you can see these two are wasting no time putting on a, a, a clinic of chain wrestling, something that I'll be honest, I don't expect seeing out of Tiffany. No, that is probably true. I don't see Tiffany putting in the time or effort to learn much of this at all. Um, <clears throat> although that could just be... Much of this imply just like wrestling? <laughs> just like, yeah, just kind of wrestling. Just... She's read the Wikipedia page on what pro wrestling is, is what you're saying. Like, exactly. She's she's seen what's, what goes oh. on on the gram and thought it would be good. Phoenix but effect Phoenix. straight to the jaw. Phoenix Driver, I think, has mastered more techniques than um, most everyone else on the roster combined. That is right. And oh my god, went for a spear and Phoenix had it well scouted, turning it into a DDT. Okay, new angle. We give Phoenix right or Phoenix uh, driver like a knockout punch. Oh. And we call it the Phoenix right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Or Phoenix Polish. And she could be like a Captain Falcon thing. You like how I'm immediately ruining the character like 10 minutes after I was like, I try my best not to fuck with Again. Phoenix. Uh, ha -ha! Yeah, but then you found a way to fuck with it. That's right, but you see Jackie Law getting a Hurricane Rana for oh. her troubles, and then, oh, it is descending into a firefight, ladies and gentlemen. Punches, kicks, close lines, and... Fact, we couldn't get her a little sitting there. We couldn't get her a little desk or something. <laughs> Why would she need a desk? I don't know. Why? Just something <laughs> to make it seem more official. Like she's not just sitting out here in a, a fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ. Shit. And I don't know if you noticed that Jackie's head collided with that steel oh, chair. I saw that. That that didn't look good, man. Jesus. You know, if you go in the dictionary and look up the word backfired, underneath it's just a picture of Tiffany's plans from tonight. But Jackie Law does not listen to Tiffany's plans. Jackie Law is still in the fight. Uh-huh, Jackie Law showing a, a tremendous ability to get up after smashing her head into a steel chair. Um, not even, yeah. not even anybody hitting her with the chair. No, 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 I will hit the chair with you. <laughs> she tried for another spear again, and Phoenix Driver maintained control before, oh, pulling her up and then into just tossing her down into a power bomb drop before picking her back up and then uh oh Jackie Law getting tombstoned it's not delivery <laughs> goes to the top rope and she's not done what is she thinking here she, she's gonna have to she's so far away Phoenix Phoenix <laughs> Phoenix. I like how she got up to her feet and almost just like, maybe I could pretend. Maybe I can pretend that didn't happen. Oh, but I can pretend that happened. <laughs> Rainmaker! That's Pulls okay. I made up for it. Ropes, goes to the pin. One, two, three. That'll do it. Don't fuck with the Rainmaker, man. God. I do love how like every other character we've tried to change things slightly and it's like to kind of differentiate them. Phoenix Driver is literally just Okada in drag. Like there's no <laughs> there's no differentiation in character than that. It's no. just Okada in drag. <laughs> That's all Phoenix and Driver I ever needed to be. That. I can fucking adore that. Uh Who's your women's champion? Kazuchika Okada, thank you very much. Yep. He's in hiding. Oh my god, the red hair's like the fucking balloons. 
Oh. Fuck him up, Shit, Phoenix. We cracked the fucking code. The Da Vinci so, code. Into, yeah. Now we need a Lady Kenny Omega. But what I don't need yeah. is this fucking dick coming down the ring again. We've had too much of this man, of this demon. See, here's the thing. Fucking Lawrence Wait. Whitney right behind him in his <laughs> stupid fucking hat. <laughs> I'm so, it's, it's our job to be impartial, but fuck that guy. Lawrence Whitney. That was a visceral response. <laughs> that was a visceral response. <laughs> fuck him up, Jeb. <laughs> that was on par with... Fuck Tatanka! <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt emotions behind that, my dog. I hate but, his uh, swarmy little face, man. And it's worse because, like, now I. It, once again, now. I don't want to cheer for Jeb, but I love Jeb. But he's got Mark fucking plays riding his coattails when Jeb should be on his fucking Russell, um, like Russell Palooza path to victory. Instead, he's off playing deedle dicks with Mark plays. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Jeb, I don't think it's... I think Jeb is just kind of going along with it because it honestly is easier for him to just not say anything when Mark drags him away to do something. Well, uh, this of course also a J1 matchup. Oh, pump handle slam from the Jebaduck. And uh, as much as they don't want to, Jeb doesn't want to acknowledge it or anything like that. He's going to have to in the ne next and final J1 matchup as he takes on Mark plays and at this point with the way the field is laid out Jebaduk versus Mark plays in uh, two weeks is looking to be for all the marbles which means that tonight Randall Crowley as much as I hate to say it is kind of in that same position Crush Atlas now finds himself in a lot more willing to just cause destruction and wanton violence because you can't win it, so you might as well make sure everyone else gets hurt along the way. Uh-huh, it's kind of a dick strategy, but fair enough. Um... <laughs> Look at who's fucking yeah, yeah, I know, Blake. I know, I know. You know, I know. I knew as, as soon as... I knew as soon as I said it. I knew. You know the little duty boys I am? Fuck them up. Fucking little duty boy. You little doo doo boy is fucking is gonna beat up his tag team champions. We're gonna take their belts. I'm gonna kick them off TV, and then Jebaduck's gonna suck the soul of Satan himself out of Randall Crowley's <laughs> dick hole. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, uh, when do we get to toss Lawrence Whitney into an open sewer? N no, what? Uh, no, that's gonna be at JWF Bashams at the Beachams. And I'm gonna throw him into a pool and then do a cannonball. <laughs> no, that's gonna be Clash at the Creek. <laughs> Clash at the Creek is so good! <laughs> oh shit! I, I want that pay per view now. It needs Clash to be like a fucking. It's powerful. <laughs> it's like a. What was that? Cartoon I Network did, show. I uh, did the other day think about, and I'm, I'm sorry, it's just. I. Jeb, you can do this. I I trust you. I've been Jeb. disappointed by you enough that I'm it now no longer phases me mm -hmm. that you're getting your shit pushed in by your greatest rival, Randall <laughs> Crowley. Like, and now fucking Lawrence is like, you yeah, have a fucking chair. Yeah. Like, I'm just. And Tommy, Tommy hasn't even tried to remove the chair yet. He's just been, yeah. He's I no I. I, uh, I want to make a Twitter account that exclusively just requests Tony Khan do really weird shit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and just see how many of them, like, he'll be on a coke bender one day and be like, What the fucking account say? Hey. It said book Chuck Taylor versus Okada at Forbidden Door. <laughs> fucking do it! <laughs> Write it out, bitches! Um, all right, but oh, oh holy oh, shit, world. Duke a world out of nowhere onto the chat, you fucking, you, I'm, you I'm going, I'm going to throw you off of television, I'm going to rip the tag titles off your, hey, Tommy, throw that chair at his fucking hands, do it. <laughs> Take 
take the chair, Tommy. Fucking hit him with it. I don't give a shit anymore. I'll do it. I love that chair. Oh, God, what a soup hap. It's like a suplex, then a reverse suplex. <laughs> oh, no, but Jeb is directly in the path of a charging bull. Gore! 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 I'm Balls sorry, into the Jeb. pinfall. One, two! Oh, kicking out at two. Oh, Duke. Duke stays in it. Duke is still in it. Well, I mean, he ain't been hit with the Ram Jam no. yet, so I'm kind of, I'm just waiting for him to, because that's what would always happen is like, this is the moment where Jeb comes back a little bit, and then <laughs> Randy's like, actually, no, here, let me just fuck your whole shit real quick. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Did you think that's what was going to happen? <laughs> Hold on a moment. Oh, tosses him into the ropes. Oh, big rising knee strike. From the the fucking fourth member of Judgment Day. The f <laughs> Before uh, being picked up, oh, kicked in the face. The Jebaduk is dazed, but the shotgun splash come on, finds its mark. And then what a headbutt. The, the, the Jebaduk is making a righteous comeback, Gumshoes. Here's hoping that it'll pay off for him. Or maybe he'll just sit around with his dick in his hands while Randall Crowley recovers. <laughs> Jeb fights. What will happen next uh, time, Super Slug? Oh, look, the big, big power bomb. One, two, two a three. A reverse, is it? And will Randall Crowley tap? Yes, he will, like a little bitch. <laughs> because no one better than the Jebaduck. Jeb. Jeb is finally reaching that potential we saw in him all those years ago. He's finally getting there, I think. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. <clears throat> Look at that. Show sure respect. Hey. Oh, he took it. He took it. Oh, I'm sure uh, Lawrence is going to have something to say about this. But uh, until we have to hear from him, unfortunately, he's been the B. I've been the S. We've been the BS. And ladies and gentlemen, this was Defiance.